In the previous video, we talked about ways of memorizing all of these derivatives. In this video, we want to prove them. Specifically, we want to prove the top half of this list. And in the next video, we will prove the bottom half. We'll get started with derivatives for sine and cosine, and then we will use those to prove the rest. So in the course of these proofs, we will often be using the fact that two functions are cofunctions of each other. For example, that cosine and sine are cofunctions. So the property that we will be making use of is that cosine of x is the same thing as sine of pi over 2 minus x. In other words, I can take the cosine of some angle or the sine of the complement of that angle and get the same value. So as I said, we'll get started with sine. We could prove this one in a few different ways. We could do it geometrically or with limits. We're going to do it using the analytic definitions of sine and cosine. And what I mean by that is that we can write sine, sine of x, as an infinite series, as an infinite sum. And we can do the same with cosine. Similar to the way that you can write e to the x also as an infinite series. Again, we start that series at 0, go all the way to infinity. We have x to the something on top, just like we do here and here, and then we divide by some factorial, just like we do in these two definitions. So all three of these are related, but the only two we'll be needing here are the ones for sine and cosine. So in order to take the derivative of sine, we just let x be some number in the domain of sine, so that is in r. We then rewrite sine in terms of something we know, that is, as this infinite sum here, and then we take the derivative of that. So just as we always would with polynomials, we just take this exponent, bring it down in front, and then we would lower this exponent by 1, which is what gives us here x to the 2n, and why we have this 2n plus 1 in front. Of course, this cancels with part of the denominator here, so that just leaves us with 2n factorial, which then simplified gives us this. And that is the same as our definition above of cosine of x. So that is our derivative for sine of x. And this is the graph for sine of x. Now we move on to cosine of x, where we will be using this information that we just gleaned. So again, let x just be some real number. So that is some number in the domain of cosine. We rewrite cosine in terms of something that we know. In other words, in terms of sine. So since they're cofunctions, we can rewrite cosine in this way. We then take the derivative of that using the chain rule. So the derivative of sine evaluated at pi over 2 minus x, and then the derivative of pi over 2 minus x itself, which gives us this here. Now why does it give us this? Because the derivative of sine is cosine, as we said before, and this negative 1 comes from this negative x here, and that is important. We talked about in the last video that all of the co-functions, all of the functions beginning with co, have a minus sign in the beginning of their derivative, and that is the reason. This will always be the case. Whenever we take the derivative of this inner argument here, we'll always be getting a negative 1 which leads to us having a negative sign in our answer. And at this point, we can look at the answer we got, cosine of pi over 2 minus x, and see that we can now rewrite that in terms of sine, since again, sine and cosine are cofunctions.
So cosine of pi over 2 minus x is the same thing as sine of x. So altogether, that gives us negative sine of x as the derivative for cosine of x. And again, here we see the graph for cosine. Now we move on to the rest of the derivatives for which we will now use the derivatives of cosine and sine. So for secant, let x be a value in the domain of secant. We then rewrite secant in terms of something that we know about, so in other words in terms of cosine here, since the definition of secant is just 1 over cosine. And then we can use the quotient rule, so in other words we take the derivative of the top times the bottom and then subtract the top times the derivative of the bottom and divide by the bottom squared which simplified gives us this again we get an answer in terms of cosine and sine but we then convert it back into these other six functions so sine cosine secant cosecant tangent and cotangent in this case we get secant and tangent. So the derivative of secant of x is secant of x tangent of x. And again here is the graph. Since cosecant now is the cofunction of secant, we can again make use of our properties of cofunctions. So after we have said that we need x to be a value in the domain of cosecant, we can just rewrite cosecant in terms of secant, again pi over 2 minus x is then our argument. We take the derivative of that using the chain rule and again we get our negative 1 as we always will. And since the derivative of secant as we just figured out is secant of x tangent of x, we get this answer here. And again since secant and cosecant are cofunctions, then we can rewrite that here as this. And since tangent and cotangent are cofunctions, we can rewrite that here as this. So again, we get the answer we had hoped to get with the minus sign in front. And this is the graph. So moving on to tangent. Again, we just let x be a number in the domain of tangent. We rewrite tangent in terms of something we know, in other words, here, sine and cosine. We use the quotient rule, we simplify, and we see here that we end up with cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x, and since we recognize that as an instance where we can use the Pythagorean trigonometric identity, that that is just equal to 1, then we do that and we end up with 1 over cosine squared of x. And again now we can rewrite those in terms of the full six functions. Uh, in this case we only need secant. So our answer is secant squared of x. And here is the graph. At this point it makes sense too to look at the graph a little closer and we see that this slope here of tangent is never negative and that makes sense since the derivative is something squared, right? Since a square can never be a negative number. So with that, only cotangent remains. Again, we just let x be some number in the domain of cotangent. And we then rewrite cotangent in terms of something that we know here in terms of tangent, since they're cofunctions. Again, we use the chain rule. Since the derivative, as we just determined, of tangent is secant squared, we get this answer here, again multiplied by negative 1. And again, since secant and cosecant are cofunctions, we can rewrite this as cosecant squared of x, and there is our negative sign, which we will always have as long as the function begins with co. And again, if we look at the graph here, we see that the slope is never positive which makes sense here since we have something squared times negative 1 which will never be positive. So with that we have shown all that was to be proved. Again we started with sine. We needed to get the ball rolling somehow so we used the analytic definition of sine. We used that 
to prove also the definition of cosine, and then we just used both of these functions to determine the derivatives for all of the rest. So with that we have proved all of the derivatives for the trigonometric functions, that is the functions on the top of this list, and in the next video we will prove the derivatives on the bottom of this list, the inverse trigonometric functions.